Hello everybody, Neo Kenshin here, continuing off with our Let's Play of Mega Man X2. Uh, in the first Let's Play, uh, we took on the first four bosses of the game, uh, took out two of the X-Hunters, got a couple of weapons, and this time we're going to keep things up with our next stage. Now, this one, um, we're going to go ahead and try to take on the last X-Hunter just to get him over with. But in the end, I have to deal with probably the worst, uh, most frustrating boss in the whole game. Crystal Snail. Right now, yeah, I'm already preparing for the impending headache, and you'll see why. <laughs> Other than the fact that the dude looks like a goofball, you know, the stage isn't bad. In fact, this is probably one of the most beautiful stages in a Mega Man game. Um, the crystal effects are just really good looking, and, you know, it's one of the... Damn it! Okay. So much for my no-death run. Ugh, crap. Alright, we're just going for a 100% walkthrough let's play. <laughs> so here we go. All right, now. All right, there we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, hardest e tank in the game, but this is done with. But like I was saying, this stage, um, which is most likely due to the C4 chip, is visually one of the most beautiful. Um, the crystal effects are really nice. Uh, really detailed. So, I mean, you know, if you're one of those graphic enthusiasts, just take it in and appreciate it. Alright. Come on, break. Alright. Yeah. Come on. Ah, oh, I'll do that. Okay. And this is, of course, the X Hunter door. Now, this is the reason why you want the Sonic Slicer. The old guy. He is probably the most piss off, annoying X Hunter in the game. First, it's the stupid mines, and then this stupid shield of his, it, it just makes things more annoying, but it, of course his big weakness is Sonic Slicer, and it's really good because, it, as you can see here, with the mines, it clears out the mines, and for some reason it, it does multiple hits on it. And Cheesehead is done! How have we delayed the inevitable? Yeah, 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 we meet again. But we get to zero part number one. The head! And now since we have zero, we can go along our merry way. and enjoy more of this absolutely phenomenal crystal stage. With stuff that I can't get because I don't have my right armor. Mini boss. Okay, apparently with this mini boss, I've seen a couple of videos where I don't know how they do it. I think it's like one of the TAS videos. They actually get a right armor up here and manage to use it on this crystal thing. And it's just insane it just blows through it but that actually um, in some parts it will actually split and like create a second one of those um, bit things but that's it we've got a little bit of a secret down here ah crap take three 
But hey, at least this proves, you know, I'm human when it comes to games. Alright, we'll try this again. And what do we have here? Our third upgrade. And the most useless upgrade in the whole game. Okay, it modifies your radar. Which means we get to see holes in the wall. Okay. Yeah, man, that's all it is. It has a weapon gauge. It uses no energy. And that's it. Other than that, this thing's useless. I mean, even the one in X1 had more of a use. It actually broke rocks. But, it, well, actually, no. This is actually one of the reasons um, for the uh, the helmet upgrade. Um, one of the things here is it shows off a room. So, and you're like, okay, well, what's the thing in the room? Well, when you get a certain weapon, you actually... Can, well, this is what kind of a unique to the game. When you get a certain weapon, um, you can actually go to these hidden rooms, and it will actually give you a surprise. Um, but we've got to wait until we get that weapon first, so once we get the weapon, then we'll come back and we'll talk about it later. But for now, let's just keep going. Uh, ow. Trying not to die. All right. Let's take a deep breath and get ready for the biggest headache fight in the game. <sighs> Crystal Snail. This guy is probably the biggest pain in the ass if you do not have the weapon to beat him. And you'll see why. Hit him with the Rega Mega Buster, and he spits snot at you. Then there's also his shell thing. You don't know when he's gonna come out, you don't know where he's gonna go. And see, that's what happens if you get hit by his snail snot. You get crystallized, and he'll probably try to fly at you. So right now, it's just, it's all a waiting game with him, because you don't know where he's going to go, you don't know what he's going to do, and it's just, ugh. And plus, he's more fun with the magnet mines anyway, because if you have magnet mines, you can actually knock him out of his shell, and he jumps around. And I think if you dash into his shell and he's not into it, you can knock it away from him. <sighs> Stupid snail. That's another thing that puzzles me. How the hell is a snail so damn fast? You want a rocket pack. Oh, well, that explains that question. He's got a rocket pack. And now... He's probably gonna make things worse here. Nope. Still spinning, still spinning. Come on, you stupid ass snail. Okay. Now he's gonna get worse. When he starts spinning like that, that's when he activates the crystal slowdown, which basically slows everything down. But him, for some reason. Die, you stupid snail! Ugh. Burn, burn, seriously. I'm just glad he's dead. 
But yeah, he's the biggest headache in the game without the magnet mine. But the weapon of choice? Snail's not! Not the crystal hunter, but snail's not. <laughs> yeah. We fling snail's not at everybody. Okay. I'm trying to reactivate through, but need more time. Take all the time you want. I'm not gonna really do anything but killing stuff and blowing crap up. We need to slow down. We've already got the part. We don't need to slow down the X hunters. Come on. Alright. The X hunters are now gone. We've got all of zero parts zero's parts. And now we can go back to the succession of bosses. Since but that was really the only deviation, but when you do it that way, it guarantees that you do get all of Zero's parts, and um, it kind of, you actually end up getting a lot more stuff that way, so it's not too bad. Okay, now this stage, now this is just, yeah, love it, ow! Rise. But yeah, the, the, the music for this stage is arguably perfect. Uh, second E-Tank, we can definitely use that. Extra man. Thank you! Alright. Screw that extra man, I ain't taking it. Alright. Run, 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 run. run. Ah, crap, 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 crap. Crap, crap. <sighs> okay. Take two. It's one of those broken walls, he'll blow it up. The only good for the, this part is to take it to the X-Hunter door. Which, of course, there's no X-Hunter, so we don't have to worry about that. And then, like, where you fall down there, that's actually kind of where the X-Hunter comes from. Alright. Now we get to deal with gas. <laughs> now we're cooking with gas. And this is another reason why the Sonic Slicer is good here is get to kill squirrels. But yeah, as you can see, that's kind of another thing that makes the Sonic Slicer really good is the fact that it does bounce off the walls like that. And I mean, it just takes up a lot. Now, oh, um... Since I didn't show you earlier, this is Crystal Hunter. It basically just shoots snail slime, and then when you power it up, it slows everything down as well. Kind of, you know, just to give you time here. But it, it's only really effective when you take on Overdrive Ostrich. And now we get to take on Flame Stag. Honestly, for a while, when I first played this game, I thought it was a horse. I didn't think it was a deer. But Flame Stag is really easy. As you can see, all you do is just jump, you know, hit him with the bubble splash. This makes it even more easier. Just charge it up, let it go, and just stay on him. Every time he hits, he flinches. So you just stay on him. And he's toast. <laughs> and of course we're still losing bonus splash energy for 
no apparent reason. <laughs> Alright, now we get the fun weapon. The speed burner. <laughs> fire, 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 fire. Now this weapon is fun simply because of its charge shot. So, but I mean, it, it's a really good weapon, high power. Um, very effective for a lot of things, and been, it's actually used basically um, for more things. Um, but let's see here. Got it, got it. Oh, let's make a quick stop over the deep sea base first. Pick up an energy tank. That's right, you're going to fish. And this is why, is simply because all it really does is it just amps your jumps up big time. Energy tank. And we'll show off the speed burner here a bit. That's the speed burner. And of course this is the shard shot, which really makes it better. It basically is a flaming air dash. And then of course underwater, it's just a uh, couple of underwater missiles. And of course you get a dash there. But that's all we need there, so we'll do that, and let's do a quick speed run. Eh, no, we won't even worry about saving, because we're just doing quick speed throughs. And uh, we'll do a quick speed through the dinosaur tank, so we can go back and get the hard tank, because because after we did this, we don't really have to go back anywhere else, since we've got everything else pretty much. But this is a good chance to just try to get some items to pull up energy tanks and play with new weapons. See, now th up here, this is where, where we got the dash boot, or the uh, buster upgrade. This is actually how you do it when you get the dash boots. You actually jump down here, fall off, and then dash over and jump up. But we don't do that. <laughs> but just in case, you know, the strike chain bit is a little too difficult, then you can always do it that way. Thank you for letting me walk on you. Alright. Alright, now here we go. There, we got it. So we get out of here. No more backtracking. So now we continue on to the robot junkyard to take on the morph moth. And this is another one of those really designed well stages. Um, with a lot of the junk detail. Okay. And another reason why you, another reason why also, as I said, the uh, way I win is good is because you have the Crystal Hunter to get that heart tank. Because without it, you couldn't get it. But the bonuses don't stop there because we have another special bonus coming up. Which is our final capsule, so it means it's the armor upgrade. So not only do we take less damage with the armor upgrade, but we get a nifty new feature. 
What is that feature you say? Boom! <laughs> That's right. He turns into a freaking bomb. But, of course, you know, it... it it's kind of the, the Giga feature that they introduced with this game, which kind of continues on. Um, you know, in, in later games, it's the Nova Strike and various Giga Crushes. Um, but, of course, um, one thing you'll notice is when you hear... When you take damage, you hear that kind of high-pitched squeal, and that's actually showing you, as you can see, that you've actually got some energy. But the thing is, you can't have the Giga Crush... You can't have it um, selected... Or it's... It's like shots or something. But once again, you can't, I don't think you can have it selected um, to fill up because it thinks you're using it. That's one of the first mini-bosses here. You'll actually see why I'm using the Bubble Splash. is because it, it, it just really does a lot of damage here in close range. And if you time it right, you can stop that sucker from hitting me in the first place. But I guess that shot or whatever he fired, that kind of activated the... Um, effect of the bubble splash. And now we get to take on these things, which these green things utterly suck. Because what happens is if they land on you, um, they actually kinda take control of you and have you jumping around like a like a freaking gopher. They really just suck. Ah. Good. I didn't want to deal anyway. And apparently, he's a little stronger. One thing to note is with the, the mini boss ones is if you don't kill them in time, um, they will actually dive back into the ground and summon a new one. But as you can see, you got one he'll and basically that's all it does is he makes you jump around for no apparent reason. Ow. I didn't say you could hit me. Alright. Next boss. Morph Moth, but no! What did he start as? In some freaky looking cocoon thing. Ow. Ah, but yeah, more, he, he's really just a pain in the butt. Or, I say that about all of them, don't I? No. But after you get him below 50%, um, he then changes into his second form, which is his true moth form. Which he then flies off, spring killing his pixie dust and firing his laser. Yes, I went there. But of course, if you got the speed burner, like a moth to a flame, he's toast. <sighs> yeah, bad plan. I know. But now we've got probably one of the most versatile weapons in the game, the Silk Shot. What's this weapon is probably the most unique weapon in the game. Simply because it changes in every stage you go to. And I'll actually show you real quick um, before we take on... Uh, well, actually, because uh, let me get one last thing here. Okay. You know what? Yeah, I'll go ahead and show you. And the best place to do is here in the desert base. Yeah. 
Okay, just to make sure. Okay, good, our sub tanks aren't that full. Okay, now, this kind of plays in part with the whole eye tracer thing. Um, because, you know, if you use the eye tracer, it shows you, yeah, okay, of course, you can bore through those, so. And it takes you to an empty room. Well, it's not so empty if you have the silk shot and the charge shot. See? Because if you try to use it, you notice it's not working. Why is it not working? Well, because if I go out here, it works. So, what's the deal? The deal is, it's when you charge your weapon. It attracts energy capsules. Which, basically, these are recharge stations that they kind of put in the game. And you just keep charging your weapon until you fill your energy tanks full. Um, the room in Crystal Snail's stage uh, is a uh, just like it, except it calls weapon capsules, which is kind of useless. So, because your weapons refill up every stage anyway, you kind of have an energy balancer built in. So, yeah, it's kind of stupid. But let's go ahead and take on the last boss, and we go to the central computer stage. Centipede. I don't care what anybody says. This stage's got the best dang music in the whole game. W well, one of the best dang things in the whole game. Plus, it's got the whole searchlight thing, so you're, you know you're, you're pulling the whole stealth bit, which is pretty fun. Ow. Yeah, I, I did the whole stealth thing. <laughs> I know. But that's just me. And this is actually one of the things that we need the speed booster for. As you can see, we get our extended dash for the final heart tank. energy tanks, all three of Zero's parts, all the heart tanks. We just need to get one more weapon and we pretty much got our 100% run complete. Mini boss. A sword. And, and you're probably wondering, why did I switch to the strike chain? Well, um, one thing that apparently they say in this game is the strike ch is it's apparently it's called the sword is in a class called Neon Bosses for some reason, um, which I don't know why um, they called it that, but apparently it just it's really effective. I didn't really find this out for a couple of years until after I was in there, so I, I, hey, whatever works, works. And more stealth parts. Whoa. make it through without a hinge. Um, actually what happens is of course you get hit by those spotlights it actually kind of has alarms go off. Now these things, these scope things, you kind of don't want to get crap. Well you kind of want to avoid them um, because it actually has an effect on a certain mini boss that we're going to be taking on here pretty soon which is this mini boss coming up right here. Um, those scanners, it's actually this thing scanning you 
and every time it scans you it actually you see it changes a different color and what that does is it actually increases its uh, attack power and abilities um, it goes to blue for level one red for level two and I believe purple which green for level three so that's one thing you kinda wanna avoid but at level and level three, he fires off like some really powerful charge shots or something. He was really getting away. Why did I use that one? Better? But once you have him, at, and you know, when you have him at the lower levels, he's not really that hard. And oh, looks like they know I'm here. So might as well make my presence known. Hello, Magnus Centipede. Now, one unique feature about him is his whole magnetic charge thing. But if you hit him with the silk shot, you notice his tail gets thrown off. And basically when that happens, all he can really do now is his ninja teleport thing and throw mines at you. But, of course, with the silk shot, just... You can easily stop that. Um... You can. There's ways you can time it to where you, know, you can just fire it and the debris hits him in the corner, and that actually kind of helps with the damage there. But yeah, sometimes they'll do the the whole disappear thing and reappear real quick. But once you've got his tail off, all it really is is just time it where he appears and let him have it. And he's toast. Well, that's number eight on our hit list. <laughs> okay. So the magnet mine. Um, this is a pretty unique weapon. Um, it, you fire it, it'll stick to walls. You can guide it up and down. Okay, we know where the X Hunter base is. Holy crap, they kicked Santa out of his house. Alright, now these guys have really pissed us off. You don't kick Santa out of his crib just to build a base. Slow him down, screw that man, I'm going up there to kick some ass man. You do not kick Santa out of his house. Just you can take over. It's wrong. But uh, and now it takes us to the X Hunter stages. But what I'm actually gonna do real quick, um, we'll go fill up our energy tanks and just kind of. Oh, and I can show you the magnet mine here. This is the the magnet mine. We can. Um, attached to walls they kind of timed off and then the charge shot is a uh, more powerful version it's actually a slow moving version that keeps moving forward that you can control uh, from time to time and it, it just keeps going in one direction until you either go off the screen um, or it goes off the screen but you can pretty much follow it and that's that's really all there is. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get this last energy tank filled. And that's the best thing about these rooms is that you can just come back through anytime. Turn on your silk shot. And just fully refill your tanks. And you're good to go. So with four full energy tanks, all of our weapons, all of Zero's parts, all the heart tanks, we set out, and one more save. Okay, well, 
and we'll go ahead and stop off here so in our next video we'll kick in and we'll take on the x hunter base so until then guys this is neo kenshin saying take it easy have fun enjoy the game other than that catch you later <laughs>